Yo, it's Wizard Fu, and I got another update for you game dev wise. Particle systems all working, looking good. Spirals, globes, discs. Let's check it out. First of all, we've got two particle systems here on the screen. Um, coming up here in a second. Oops, I forgot to compile here. Uh, there's going to be a smoke particle system coming off the fire, and then a globe particle system, well, actually a spiral particle system going on around that lodestone. So you can see there's a particle system here. It's some yellow and red particles. Some of them are big. Some of them are small. And we got another one over here by this lodestone, sort of spiraling upwards to the top there. Well, let's play around with it a little bit. We can check out, there's a couple different styles we can, we can uh, edit here in the data. So that was type spiral. Actually, let's change up the spirals uh, radius first. So it goes in three, bi three bits. There's the radius at the very bottom, the radius in the middle, and then the radius at the very top. Let's make the radius at the very top a little bigger so it's more like a cone. <laughs> now it breaks. Oh, whoa, that was weird. Oh, I think it didn't actually show that the, the entity for some reason didn't click on as being visible for a second there. I'll have to play around with the C systems, but you can see that it's kind of like cone, it's like a cone shape now. All right, so let's go back to that globe shape. Um, we can play around with anything, the colors, the opacities. Oh, that's not a thing anymore. And this is no longer a thing either. Okay, we can we can up the amount. Let's do a thousand particles instead of a hundred. Let's see what happens. And let's do a, a cone top, tapered middle. Whoa, tons of particles. Are we still? At, oh, we're not going to be at a good frame rate while recording this video here. Right? It's kind of neat though. Three dimensional particle systems. Let's take it back to 100 particles there. We can change the speed. Let's make the speed a lot faster. Let's see what's like that. There's a much swirlier swirl. Um, let's do one more thing with the um, with the vector here. Let's change the change up the vector. So right now we've got a, a Z up. Let's make it X. Right, it'll be laying on its side. This is pretty. This is demonstrating that the uh, the movement of the system is uh, three dimensional with the vector, which is crazy math to figure out. There had to there was these dot products and cross products, and uh, you'll see in a second with the math. But anyways, three dimensional. Uh, it's basically a cylinder with a varying radi radius that uh, achieves this sort of cone effect. Uh, but there, that's that's it with the vector laying straight on its side. What if we did a vector straight down? I haven't tried this yet. This might break. There's straight down. That'll, uh, we already got a negative 10 offset though, so this is gonna be going into the ground, yeah. Let's change that offset so we can actually see that. There you go. That's kind of neat. Maybe that could be some kind of spotlight effect. Hey, I'm glad it worked. Nothing broken there. Okay, so we've demonstrated the vector. Let's go back to our original vector. And let's play with some different types. Um, check out this weird type I found today. While I was making the spiral system, I found out I can make a disk system. This is kind of cool. So everything is at the same height. Probably play around with that. Maybe I'll make it bounce instead of just disappear at the top but it's sort of like a disk system. And there's also this one called solar system, which is basically a lot like the spiral, except it doesn't, um, let's make it bigger. It's just like the spiral, except that it doesn't move the particles upwards. They just rotate around and around and around at the same Z height. But we want that to be just wider, like a hundred at the top. There you go. Oh, the, seeing the solar system 
is a lot better with the slow speed. And you notice I don't have to recompile my game every time I'm doing this because this is all data. So look at that. That's pretty neat. The slow moving particle system. Hey, and even one of those particles is a big particle. It's twice as big. Yeah. That's basically just four voxels instead of one voxel. And that even the, the smoke has some of the, that too. Usually. Yeah, there's one. Okay, so let's check out some of the math. Uh, this is all in particles. Um, I've showed a little bit of this in the last couple of videos, but this is the header. Let's get in, let's get into the actual like CPP file, and we'll go to how it ticks particle kind spiral. So this is dramatically simpler actually than um, than the other types of particle movement. In fact, the other types of particle movement have all this crazy stuff that like resets their position every time they hit an edge like if it gets to the edge of its size it resets its position this is much simpler it basically uses a percentage now instead of trying to reset the trying to make every single particle have a vector and then um, move by the vector and then see if the particle is moved outside of the system and then reset the vector to something else so it's not uh, outside the system or reset the position and the vector at the same time. This is way simpler. All it does is just update the position of the particle based on the percentage. So uh, um, let's actually look at what, what all of this entails. The percentage um, is just 0 to zero to 1.0 um, and that's right here it's it's adding in the system's overall percentage with also the offset percentage of this particular particle. And then this is how it actually does like the disk kind and the solar system kind. It just plays with this length percentage here. And uh, the radius is basically uh, determined by those three radius radius numbers that we saw earlier. Like before it was like 151 and then it was like 150, 100. That just basically uh, mixes those three numbers together um, to determine a single number based on the length percent. And um, and then the radius is also uh, determinant on the radius factor of the individual particle. And then the individual particle also has an angle offset. So when it determines the angle, it, it takes the angle that the particle started at and adds in percentage and period of the overall system. And then we've got length of the cylinder, um, and that's the length percent times the vector times the size is length. So that's actually a, a, a vector right there. The vec times the size and you get the length. So um, it's basically the size vector times the vector vector so that you get, like if, if the vector is zero, zero, 001, then you're only gonna get the z's length. And uh, if you've got a crazy vector with all three coordinates, then you're gonna get something accurate. So uh, this is a p dot pause is getting set to the offset of the whole system and then we've adding in the math cylinder equation, which has basically a varying radius, which gives it this sometimes a cone effect, sometimes a sphere effect. This is kind of a versatile function. So let's jump into this math cylinder. This is kind of like, uh, I'm really proud of this. I spent last night figuring out how to create, um, how to put a point on a 3D circle that can be at any different normal or any different vector. For example, the circle can be facing straight up the circle could be facing diagonally up and uh, like you know to the right so it could be any different normal or vector and uh, this basically just takes a uh, um, I found this on math out sack exchange how to how to do a three-dimensional circle it's this equation right here it's just the radius times the cosine times the X plus the radius times the sine times the B so I mean these a b. So what what a and b are is a is a perpendicular to the vector. So the vector is the overall vector of the system. If the system were pointing straight up, our vector would be zero zero one. The z is the one. So um, a is a perpendicular to that vector. I had to look up this too. So the perp equation I found on Stack Overflow as well. This is kind of, um, this, this works for my purposes. I'm not sure if this is perfectly accurate though. I've 
I kind of based this on Stack Overflow's answer, but added a little bit of stuff here. So um, this is just swapping around some X and Y and Z variables. Um, and I think this works pretty accurately. So, but anyways, it's working for my my uh, my purposes, and I've checked that it is working by doing these assertions right here. So basically, a should be a perpendicular vector to the vector, the to vec, let's say. B is actually a perpendicular vector to A and C. So we get that by crossing uh, the vector, or we're crossing vec with A. So that gives us a perpendicular to both of those. And then we've got C, um, which is the, 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 the starting position of the of this point on the cylinder so that's the vector times the length or vec times the length and then d is our addition of the circle so this this is the circle in 3d and we're adding that to c at the end and returning c so basically it's just uh so the answer to this point on the cylinder is just c plus d and then uh so basically to check that all those are perpendicular vectors i've got these these uh, all the dots should be zero, and they all do equate to zero because we've got these assertions in here, and so far it's never triggered that assertion, so pretty stoked about that. I was checking it all kind of by hand when I was debugging it, and finally I just added these assertions, which is just like, you know, boom, proof. So, that's it. You check, you took a look at the, uh, the advanced three-dimensional vector math going on here. It had been quite a while since I did any, any of this kind of math. You, if you saw my live stream of trying to start these three-dimensional particle systems, I was confused as hell. I couldn't. I was like, "What the hell am I supposed to get? Of how am I supposed to get a circle in three dimensions? How am I supposed to bend points based on a vector? Like, eh, it was crazy confusing. But the the answers came. It just took some time. So, like anything else in game development. So uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. See ya.